Hi, I'm Scott Wrighton. I serve as Decatur City Manager and every week uh, somebody, usually me, but or maybe somebody else from our office, uh, is pleased to provide these weekly updates on what's going on in your city government. Although I mentioned before, I want to give yet another update. The city conducted an administrative hearing earlier this week with the four private ambulance company applicants that have requested that we issue them a license. The purpose of the hearing was to make sure we have all of the information necessary to complete that evaluation and we'll be trying to make that decision as rapidly as possible. One of the things I really want to emphasize as well in all of this is that even though the City of Decatur only has the legal authority to issue licenses to operate an ambulance inside the city limits of Decatur, we have from the very beginning of this process been very sensitive to the fact that DAS serviced what I call Greater Macon County, not just the City of Decatur, Macon County itself plus some of the uh, smaller communities right outside of Macon County into Moultrie County and into Piatt County, for example. Roughly a population size of 110 to 115,000 people. We wanted to make sure that, that the service for everybody in Macon County, not just Decatur, was as seamless as possible and that there was as little reduction, even temporarily, in services as we make this very important change. By doing that, it's more economically viable for the companies that are looking at coming into Decatur, plus by making sure that we are providing a service in that entire area, then it would eventually and hopefully foreclose any necessity for, say, rural fire protection districts to have to put a tax on the, on the ballot or something like that to support an ambulance service. Generally, it's very difficult to make ambulance services in these rural areas um, cost effective, and so to avoid having them be a drain on the taxpayers, we've sought to make sure that the service is available to all of Greater Macon County. One of the other things that the city is doing is uh, managing a very large amount of vacant properties. Many of them, in fact the vast majority of them, are vacant lots in the sense that they've, they've had a structure cleared away usually because it was unsafe or it had to be condemned and demolished. And the process that the Macon County uses uh, to deal with some of these properties is that if nobody pays their taxes for a three-year period, then that property is sold at a tax foreclosure sale. Now, what's being sold is, is not the taxes, it's the fact that no one over a three-year period has even bothered to buy the taxes, giving them an opportunity to acquire the property through a tax deed because they paid those taxes. The city of Decatur has a large inventory of properties because uh, we have taken over those properties that at the end of this three-year process every year, Macon County has nowhere else to distribute these properties to. Nobody wants to buy the taxes on them. Nobody wants to buy them at all. And so we become the uh, property manager of last resort for the county. Why I bring that up now is because once a year, these black and gold signs start to appear, um, several hundred of them, around the county, not just in the city of Decatur, where property has become delinquent in this fashion as a way of announcing the fact that Macon County is, a, is about to conduct that auction and it's that time of the year. So you, you might see these signs popped up by, even on, on buildings that have been in the news like the Woodrow Wilson School over on the west side and some other structures. The city tries to work with the county to make sure that, that uh, uh, we're intercepting some of these properties and acquiring them especially where there's the possibility of redevelopment or where the city is trying to assemble properties um, and uh, where we're not successful at that and then eventually some of these properties go on this master map or master list that you can look at at the City of Decatur's website showing all the locations where we have these 700 plus properties around the city which are available to, for, for purchase for just a nominal fee really to expand your side yard or to put together a developable lot. If you'd like to look at that map I encourage you to go to our website decaturil.gov. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about police recruitment. The fact that um, we've had trouble recruiting police officers is by no means unique to the city of Decatur. It's a problem that police departments all over the United States are having. In fact, many police departments are having a much tougher time of it than the city of Decatur. Minneapolis's police department is down 30 percent. The District of Columbia's police department is down 15 percent. We're about 11% down. Uh, later this week, we're going to be uh, adding uh, four new police officers uh, to our force who are graduated from the academy. 
We've also taken affirmative steps to make sure that uh, we make it as attractive as possible. Maybe some of you have seen our billboards around town offering a $5,000 signing bonus. We've made changes in, in schedules and, uh, and the shifts. We, we also plan to make uh, additional incentives to keep people who have served their 20 years and might be eligible to retire, but we want to keep that institutional knowledge in the department by giving them some, some incentives to stay. Uh, we've added provisions uh, to our labor contract, allowing us to attract officers who already have a few years in at, uh, at another police department or, or county sheriff's office down the road and made other changes to try to, to, uh, to recruit people to our, to our department. But we are bucking uh, a national trend, and, uh, and, it's, and it's one that, that's driven by the fact that, um, uh, generally speaking, I'm not saying about Decatur, but generally speaking, people are less respectful to police officers today. Generally speaking, our police officers have to deal with more violence than they used to even just three or four years ago. But ladies and gentlemen, this is a high calling. This is an occupation where if you're young and looking at, at a new career that, that you might have an interest in public service, this is where you can make a difference in your community. So I would encourage you to contact our Human Relations Department if you have any interest in serving in, uh, in, a, in the position of, uh, of a police officer. Our city and mayor and city council have been very supportive uh, in, uh, in their, in their uh, allocation of funds, of equipment, and certainly by speaking uh, very positively about the police department because of the achievements that our police department has had in professionalizing their department long before some of the issues like with George Floyd and, and other incidents around the country were in place. We were, we were ahead of that curve, making it a, a professional department, a, a modern department uh, where, um, where some of the most modern and uh, really even trend-setting um, uh, law enforcement strategies are, are in place. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to our next week's installment of this video. And uh, uh, thanks for the feedback that you provide to the city as well, which helps us do our job.